God is on the throne and prayer changes things. Father, we thank you for your mercies and your goodness. We thank you for your kindness to us, O oh God. You say in your word, not willing that any should perish, that all should come to repentance, O oh God, and come to the knowledge of knowing you and the purpose that you have for those that you have foreknew, those that you predestined to be with you, that where you are, they may be. Lord, anoint your servant as you. He gives the word to those that are listening, let, them, let their eyes be open, that their hearts receive the word of life. This I pray and this I ask in Jesus' name and for his name's sake. Amen. Title of my message today is, My Spirit Shall Lead You to the Place. Exodus 23, verse 20 and 21. Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Do not provoke him, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. Behold, I am sending someone who will protect you in the way to bring you to the place that I have prepared. How amazing it is for you and I that the Lord will use a whole nation of people to give, a, give us the revelation of our journey. The writer of Hebrews says that all that they did was for our learning. So there's a story being told in the Old Testament to tell you of what God desire and expects of us in the New Testament. Deuteronomy 12, verse 5. But you shall seek the place where the Lord God, your God, chooses out of all your tribes to put his name for his dwelling place, and there you shall go. They were going to come into the land of promise or the promised land. There's a difference between the land of promise and the promised land. One is down on the earth. That's a land that was promised to the descendants of Abraham. They were like the, they would be like the sand on the seashore. The other one is the land above. They will be like the stars of heaven. So it's the land of promise and the promised land. The words are reversed to give you an idea which one is above and which one is beneath. And so God was going to use the descendants of Abraham to show us, uh, th those of us that are the children by faith of Abraham, our journey in the heavens as opposed to their journey on the earth. So you must seek out the place the Lord God will choose from all the tribes. So of all the churches and of all the different faiths, God was going to choose one particular place to put his, 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 his temple, his anointing. And so that natural place was among all those that came out of, out of Egypt, all of the tribes. But the Lord says, of all you different churches, the Baptists, the Methodists, the Captives, the Catholics, the Pentecostals, the Presbyterians, all of those faiths are like a different tribe. Mm. Uh, but among you, I'm going to set up a place. And there you must come. And there you must worship. Deuteronomy 12, verse 10 and 11. But when you cross over the Jordan and dwell in the land which the Lord your God is giving you to inherit, and he gives you rest from all your enemies round about, so that you dwell in safety, then there will be the place where the Lord your God chooses to make his name abide. There you shall bring all that I command you, your burnt offerings, your sacrifices, your tithes, the heave offerings of your hand, and all your choice offerings which you vow to the Lord. So God is making it clear that I know you're saved. All of those people that came out of Egypt were saved by the blood of the Lamb. All of those that came out of Egypt went through the Red Sea, which was baptized by water, it says in Corinthians. All of them came to Mount Sinai, which was Pentecost. They had a Holy Spirit encounter. But 
when they got into the land that God promised to their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, there will be a particular place where he would set his name. Look in Deuteronomy 16, verse 2. Therefore, you shall sacrifice the Passover to the Lord your God from the flock and the herd in the place where the Lord chooses to put his name. So the Lord says, I want you to practice the Passover where the place is I will put my name. Also, Deuteronomy 14, 23. And you shall eat before the Lord your God in the place where he chooses to make his name abide. The tithe of your grain and your new wine and your oil, of the firstborn of your herds and your flocks, that you may learn to fear the Lord your God always. So I want to spiritualize that. Take what was a natural experience. Jesus said, if I tell you worldly and earthly things and you do not understand how can you understand the calling in the kingdom of God, he says in John 16. So verse John 14, 2, let's see what Jesus said. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. In my father's house, just like it was on the earth, there are many tribes. And every tribe, they lived in their tents. Each tribe in the spiritual representing a different faith that's in Christ. Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian. In my father's house, you have all these denominations. But I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also. You remember when we read in Exodus 23 that that angel would protect them and bring them to the place and prepare for you? It's in John 14 where Jesus says, I am the way. <laughs> I am the truth. I am the life. No man can come to the place where I'm going unless my Father send me to them. And no man can come to the Father but by the Son. And no man can come to the Son unless the Father bring them to that place. Bring them out of their tents out of their, where their tribe is, to bring them to the place prepared specifically for those who wants to worship God in the spirit and not in the location where they are. John 13, 33, so Jesus told <clears throat> the people, Little children, I shall be with you a little while longer. You will seek me, and as I said to the Jews, where I am going, you cannot come. So Jesus is saying to the disciples, he called them children at that time. They weren't mature. They haven't grown up. I have to go to prepare this place among all the other religions, or the, all the other faiths, because those faiths are real legitimate people of God. The Baptists are real legitimate people of God. The Methodists, the Presbyterian, the Holiness. The, the, the Church of Christ, the uh, uh, Seven Day of Venice, all, all of these different faiths are genuinely people that have put their faith and confidence in Christ. Mm -hmm. But he goes to prepare a place separate from that place. Mm -hmm. I go, and where I go, you cannot come yet. Why? Because there must be certain preparations in order for us to be able to go there. John 14, verse 28. You have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. So he says, I'm going away, but I'm coming back. You heard me say, I'm going, but I'm going to come back for you. Go ahead. If you loved me, you would rejoice because I said, I'm going to the Father, for my Father is greater than I. You would rejoice because I'm going away to come back, to get you, to bring you where I'm going to. But in my father's house, there's many places I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm not going. So if you was in the Old Testament, I'm not going where Reuben set up his tent. I'm not going where Simeon set up his. And where the Le Levi set up his. And Judah set his. And Issachar and Dan. And, and, and Joseph and Ephraim and Manasseh. I'm not going where the Baptists are. I'm not going where the Methodists are. I'm going to the place where my father is. 
And, the, oh, and, and so I have to prepare a place for you to be able to come there where I am. Hebrews 6 verse 20. So the writer of Hebrews tell us, he, he tell us about this different location. Go ahead. Where the forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus, having become high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. So let's read the verses, a few verses before that, so I can give you uh, an idea. Where, where, where is Jesus going? Thus God, determining to show more abundantly to the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, that by two immutable things, in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation, who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters the presence behind the veil. So this presence is behind the veil. This is not in the place where all the houses are in heaven. This is where the Mosad reside, in the upper chamber. I'm taking you beyond religion. I'm taking you beyond your denomination. I'm taking you outside of the world you call the universe. In other words, I'm taking you out of the matrix that you may be where I am. For no one has seen that God. No one has seen that God. Which one? The one outside of the matrix. I have come to declare him. Not in the Jewish religion. Not in the Catholic religion. Not in the Pentecostal religion. I have come to declare to individuals who will be an epistle seen and read by all men. First Peter 2, chapter 4, I mean, First Peter 2, verse 4 through verse 6. Coming to him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also... Also, hold on. And so when Jesus came to his own, they received him not because he brought a different message. He was in the world. The world was made by him. And the world didn't even want that message. See, religion and politics, the world speaks of the political system, to his own speak of the religious system. Pontius Pilate rep represented the worldly thing when they said, he says he's guilty, even though he was innocent. The high priest represented the church that took him to Pontius Pilate. So the political and the religious system rejected. Then the people had a choice and they say, give us Barabbas. So the people rejected him. The church rejected him and the government rejected him. So coming to a living stone rejected by men, but chosen and precious in God's sight. So Jesus has come to get us out of whatever religion we're in. But you must start in religion to get him, get to the place where he comes to get you out of it. So the Lord wants you to be in some church, some denominations before he call you. So many are called out of religion, but only few are chosen to leave it. And even among the chosen, only a few are faithful. So in Revelation, you see those that are called, those that are chosen, and those that are faithful. In Revelation 2 and Revelation 3, you see the churches, the seven churches in the holy place. They are not in the most holy place. So he says to all the churches in the holy place, where he has a priest that looks like the Son of Man, it's not him. It looks like him. So he has a priest in that holy place ministering to the churches. So he says, say to all the pastors over the seven churches, he that have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches, you can leave that church and go beyond the veil. And so we read in Hebrews 6.20, that Jesus was the forerunner that went beyond the veil. 
he left the church. The church crucified him. The government crucified him. And the people crucified him. So when they crucified him, they rejected the stone. Continue. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house. So oh. as if I'm a stone like Christ, then it is the church that must reject me. It is the government that must reject me. And it is the people that reject me. The problem with those that are called and those that are chosen is they can't handle rejection. So they keep trying to get the people of God to accept them. The people of God did not accept Christ. The, the world, surely they understand that we love them for God so loved the world, but the world that Jesus loved rejected him and family and friends rejected him. And so when you decide or when God decides to make you and I a living stone, you have to let go of the people in the church. You got to let go of the people of the world. You have to let go friends and family. Jesus said, if you love mother, brother and sister more than me, if you even love your more life than me, you cannot be my disciple. You can be Abraham's disciple. You can be Moses' disciple. When, well, or let's put it in modern day. You can be Baptist. You can be Methodist. You can be Catholic. You can pr be Presbyterian. You can be Holiness. You can be Church of God in Christ. You can be the Church of Christ in God. You can, <laughs> you, you can be, uh, you, you can be the Holy Apostle of the Firstborn. You can, whatever you name your ministry, you can be that. And so it says, and you as Livingstone, go ahead. Are being built up a spiritual house. You're being built up a spiritual house. See, the Baptists have a natural house. The Catholics have their natural house. And they put the names on their natural house. St. Anthony's and St. Jude and uh, 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 St. Luke and St. Matthew's and uh, the first Baptist of, of uh, and the first Baptist of whatever town that they're in, you know. <laughs> and you get all of these names on those buildings. But you as a living temple. And not only that, continue. A holy priesthood. You are a holy priesthood because you're going to be ministering in your, in your temple. Go ahead. To offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. And no one, no, no wedge should we ever be ashamed of the calling of suffering with godly people of the church, people of the world, friends and family that don't understand our high calling. See, what's the difference between their calling and your calling? Yours is high. Your calling is based off of better promises. Mm -hmm. Not on the natural sacrifice. You yourself will be the sacrifice. God will provide himself, himself as the lamb. God himself will be the Passover. And so God is looking for more lambs. So what the Bible says in Peter, be like the lamb that was led to the slaughter, yet open not his mouth, that in the days of his flesh, he talked to the one who was able to save him, and he was heard in that he feared. So now, let me look at the journey of how God is going to take us to that place. Jeremiah 26, verses 4 through 6. And you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord, If you will not listen to me, to walk in my law which I have set before you, to heed the words of my servants, the prophets, whom I sent to you, both rising up early and sending them, but you have not heeded, then I will make this house like Shiloh, and will make this city a curse to all the nations of the earth. So the Lord says this simple thing here. 
Notice this is not written to pastors. Notice this is not written to evangelists. He says, if you do not listen to my servants, the prophets. See, the prophets are the one that the church rejects. They don't reject their pastors because the prophet tells you the truth about your calling. Why you chose. So it is the prophets that God sends to us to say, thus said the Lord. So they had prophets. And when Jesus came, who was also a prophet, remember what they did with that prophet? The church rejected that prophet. So Jesus said to the people, you're just like your fathers. Your fathers killed the prophets. And you build their tombstones and their graves. You are like a white sepulcher. On the outside, you're white. You're righteous. But underneath, in the grave, is dead man bones. You go down to the graveyard, you see all these white stones. All of them are over dead men bones. So are all of those people righteous that are buried in the gravesite? See, you can justify killing Jeremiah. You can justify killing Ezekiel. So the prophets, they died violent deaths. All of the apostles died violently, except John, who they tried to kill him, but he couldn't die. So Joshua 18, verse 1, what happened when they got into the land of promise? What happens for you and I when we get there? We've been born again by the blood of the Lamb. We've been baptized in water in the name of the Lord. We've been baptized in the Holy Ghost. We get to the promised land. Guess what happens when you get to the promised land? You all saved and filled now. Josh 18, 1. Now the whole congregation of the children of Israel assembled together at Shiloh and set up the tabernacle of meeting there, and the land was subdued before them. You go to church. When you get all of the promises, what you think are all of the promises of God, you set up church. You attend the service. The place where you got saved or the place where you go to get baptized. You, so when they got to the land of promise, you know what they did? They set up church. But that's not the place where God wanted to lead them. See, that was the old church. That was the one in the wilderness. That was the church of the way. It was not the church of the promise. Because the Lord told them, I will send an angel who would take you from the way and lead you to the promise. And when you get to the land of promise, he's going to set up a particular place. So when they got to the land of promise, they set up church. <laughs> and they started, they were excited. We have arrived, they thought. And so they set up that place where in Shiloh, a tent of meeting where God would meet with them. And you already learned from me, those of you that are following me, in the wilderness, they had the tent of the presence of the Lord. Uh, this, this Sunday coming, <laughs> I'll be sharing the, the, what was the temple and who was in that place and what was separate and different from the temple and the tabernacle. Now, in 1 Samuel 4, Verse 12. Then a man of Benjamin ran from the battle line the same day and came to Shiloh with his clothes torn and dirt on his head. Can you read the next verse? Now when he came, there was Eli sitting on a seat by the wayside watching, for his heart trembled for the ark of God. And when the man came into the city and told it, all the city cried out. When Eli heard the noise of the outcry, he said, What does the sound of this tumult mean? And the man came quickly and told Eli. Eli was ninety-eight years old, and his eyes were so dim that he could not see. Then the man said to Eli, I am he who came from the battle, and I fled today from the battle line. And he said, What happened, my son? So the messenger answered and said, Israel has fled before the Philistines, and there has been a great slaughter among the people. Also your two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, are dead and the Ark of God has been captured. The Ark of the Covenant, 
decided to move while I was in the land. Unbeknown to them, unbeknown to Christianity, I've started this off telling you that he told them, when you get to the land, I'm leaving this house. <laughs> See, you can keep coming to church, but God will leave your church to take you to the place he wants for you. To see if you will follow him out of religion into the spirit. So the Lord said to the people in his days, tear this temple down. <laughs> so you can follow me. As long as the church is here, he says, you guys ain't going to follow me. You're going to keep to your religion and to your habits, to your form, to your rituals. I can't get you out of that. You was raised and born and baptized in your culture. So he said, tear down. And so Eli continued. Then it happened when he made mention of the ark of God that Eli fell off the seat backward by the side of the gate and his neck was broken and he died. He died. Now, guess who also died in the battle? It named it. Who died in the battle? His two sons. What were their names? Hophni Hoff, and Phineas. Both of them died. Now, who is Eli? Eli is the high priest. If Eli died, it goes to his son. Both of the sons die. Hmm. And so, what happens? Continue. And his neck was broken, and he died, for the man was old and heavy, and he had judged Israel forty years. Now his father, his daughter-in-law. So his daughter-in-law, go ahead. Phineas's wife. Phineas' wife. So Phineas had a wife. So the high priest died. The person that would get the next calling as high priest, both of those boys died. Mm -hmm. But there's good news. What's the good news? One of their wives is pregnant. Continue was with child due to be delivered. And when she heard the news that the ark of God was captured and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she bowed herself and gave birth for her labor pains came upon so her. So what happened when she heard the news that the ark of God was taken and her husband, it automatically put her into labor prematurely. <clears throat> Continue. And about the time of her death, the women who stood by her said to her, do not fear, for you have borne a son. So she brought the replacement, the next high priest. Only one problem. Continue. But she did not answer, nor did she regard it. Then she named the child Ichabod, saying, Amen. Why? The it glory. Be a high priest without glory. He will be a high priest without glory. Why? Because the ark was taken. He would still be able to grow up and minister in the tabernacle of Moses, but the ark would not be there. He will be a high priest without glory. The Lord is saying to you and I, even after you've been born again, even after you've been washed in the water, even after you've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, even after you've been in church, you can be a high priest without any glory. Because the glory had departed. So, continue. Because the ark of God had been captured. Because the ark of God has been captured. You see, you don't know what the ark of God is. But if you don't have that ark inside your temple, you still can minister, you still can go to church, you can still have all the form, but you have no glory. You still can have a name. See, that was still the tabernacle of Moses. You can still have people coming and putting stuff on the altar. That altar was still the same altar. Everything was the same except one thing. The glory of God had departed. You see, God has called you to be a high priest. God has called you and making you a temple where you minister, but is the glory still in the temple? And if the ark is not there, 
then the glory is not there. Continue. And because of her father-in-law and her husband. And she said, the glory has departed from Israel. The glory has departed from you, from your temple. I can be in the same church and it may not depart from me because I'm a temple. You're a temple. And you, you see, the glory has departed from your temple. I can see. You, 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 you see that in backslidden people. You see darkness where you used to see light. The, why? Because the glory, had, when the glory leave, the light leave. I can have a person come into my church and I already know something has happened. I see darkness where I used to see light. I see that the glory had departed. They still come into church, but they are Ichabod. It's gone. Continue. For the ark of God has been captured. Man. And so you have these stories. So say, so I would normally say when I have a whole lot of people, but I'm streaming this, I would normally say, say neighbor. <laughs> and so I would say, say that the spirit is going to find his place. See, that was not his place. His place was not in the tabernacle. His place was not in the tabernacle because Eli was big. His two sons were wicked. God's place is not among those that are given to appetite and those who do not welcome him. He will leave the temple and leave the temple standing only for a little while. Because once the glory of God leaves your tabernacle, or leave your tent, or leave your temple, it's just a matter of time for you to fall into the ground and die. And so, Jesus told them what he told them, Mark 14. Fifty-eight. Am I in the right place? Um, um, or did I skip something? I think we skipped Second Kings. 22. Okay, I'm sorry. Second Kings. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Second Kings twenty-two, verse nineteen. I, I got to hit it myself. Because your heart was tender and you humbled yourself before the Lord when you heard what I spoke against this place and against its inhabitants, that they would become a desolation and a curse, and you tore your clothes and wept before me. I also have heard you, says the Lord. So this boy is a young boy. He's seven or eight years old, and they make him king. His name, he's going to be the last saved king in the nation of Israel. He's the most righteous king of all the kings. He's more righteous than David. And so his birth was prophesied a couple hundred years before he was born. When Jeroboam and, and, and came out of Egypt, and and representing the ten tribes, they asked Solomon to show mercy. And Solomon said his baby finger was thicker than the neck of his father. And he, he, and he, he put a lot of taxes on them. So ten of the tribes broke away from the other two tribes. And they built up gods like Egypt. And they put them in the place where people came to worship. Now, unbeknown to most people, they don't know where Shiloh was. They don't know the history of Shiloh. But Joshua set that up when he first up where he was. So he set, he set up that location where he lived at. That's why the woman at the well said to Jesus in John chapter 4, you Jews worship in Jerusalem. We, the ten tribes, we worship in Samaria. That's where Shiloh was. And, 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 and see, what he was, she was saying is, we trumped you. Because when we came out, this is where we had the tabernacle. You Jews, David set up a temple in the city of David, in Jerusalem, and in Zion. So you want us to take all of the tribes were going, all 12, and all of the tribes were coming here to worship. Yah changed the location, he said to Jesus. She said to Jesus. And Jesus said, look, we, cha we, say we changed the location. 
because salvation was of the Jews. It was the Jews that followed the, to the place where the angel set up. That's how it got here in Jerusalem. It, it didn't get here because of David. It got here because this is where the Lord led David to. And so if you don't know the story of the Old Testament, you don't see that once the ark of God left Shiloh, it began a journey to show everyone where the place was to build the temple. And so there were people to say, we can't accept the new location. We can't leave the old way. You can't put that new wine in our new our old wineskin. We going to burst. So not everybody can leave religion. So when you get saved and you try to get people to see the revelation of God that's above and not beneath, they turn on you because you're trying to destroy their faith. And they should turn on you because you get out of your lane and you in their lane. You can't tell them that's not a true calling. You can't tell Reuben that he's not a real tribe. You can't tell Simeon and Levi and Judah and Issachar and Dan and Nephilim and, and, and Benjamin and Joseph. You can't tell them they not real. You can't tell the Baptists they not real. You can't tell the Methodists and the Catholics and the Pentecost. You can't do that. You need to stay in your calling and make your calling and your election sure and get out their lane. Because they have a place in heaven. This is not the place where you and I are going. So that young boy, heart was tender. And the Lord said to him, because you humbled yourself before the Lord, that you, I, I won't do it in your day. I, I'm not going to, because the temple was still standing when Josiah was, uh, oh, I can't say president, when he was king. <laughs> when he was king. And oh my God, did this man love, he loved God more than King David. When he died, everybody wept. And guess how he died? Interfering in God's business. He died because Pharaoh was fighting the Assyrians. Or I'm sorry, the Babylonians. And 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 as Pharaoh, I'm sorry, not the Babylonians, the Assyrians. And he made a covenant with the Assyrians to fight against Egypt. And so the Pharaoh sent Josiah a message. He said, I'm not your enemy this time. I was your, my, back in the history, I was your enemy. He said, I'm one of you this time. He said, your God is sending me to fight the Assyrians. Don't meddle. Stay in your lane. I'm sent by your God, he told him. Josiah didn't believe it, disguised himself, and went to fight. And got killed in the battle. Even, even if your heart is tender. Even if you humble yourself before God. Stay out of other people's callings when it come to God. Stay in your lane. And so. God. Buried him and they wept for him. And they say, Jesus said this, they won't weep again like they wept for him until they see me in my return. And he said, every eye shall see me. And I will pour on them the spirit of grace and the spirit of supplication. And they shall weep for him whom they pierce. Jesus says he's the other Josiah. He's the other King David. But he's the one from above that's calling us to rent our clothes, to humble ourselves. When we see what's going on in the church, when we see the world reject our Christ, that when they knew him, they wouldn't glorify him as God and came vain in the art of their imagination that men with men and women with women. And they changed the glory of the invisible God like into something that could be seen in nature, or in man himself. Psalm 78, 
starting with verse 60. So that he forsook the tabernacle of Shiloh. So he forsook the, the tabernacle of Shiloh. Go ahead. The tent he had placed among men, and delivered his strength into captivity and his glory into the enemy's hand. Go ahead. He also gave his people over to the sword. He and gave them over. God will give you over, even though you've been called and you are a, a living temple or a living stone. God will give you over. He'll give you over to the world. He'll give you over to the church that you're in. He'll give you over to the sword. It will destroy your faith. Because faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Continue. And was furious with his inheritance. He was in fury. He was, so this is an example for you and I. Go ahead. The fire consumed their young men, and their maidens were not given in marriage. Their priests fell by the sword, and their widows made no lamentation. Then the Lord awoke as from sleep, like a mighty man who shouts because of wine. And he beat back his enemies. He put them to a perpetual reproach. Moreover, he rejected the tent of Joseph and did not choose the tribe of Ephraim, but chose the tribe of Judah, Mount he, Zion. So he's he going to reject Ephraim and Joseph and all of them, because remember now, Joshua was from the tribe of Ephraim. And so he's going to take and, and go to Judah, and they're going to build a temple as he rejects the tabernacle that was at Shiloh when the angel said, I'm going to find the place for the name of the Lord. Because obviously, after you've been in the presence of the Lord, you still don't want my name. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 65, 15. You shall leave your name as a curse to my chosen, for the Lord God will slay you and call his servants by another name. I'm going to call them by another name. So he changed he changed with Shiloh, which was the presence of the Lord. The angel of his presence was there. He changed the temple that he burned down with Nebuchadnezzar. And that was where the name of the Lord, the angel of his name resided there. He left his presence. He left his name. But then he sent us his word. Oh, y'all didn't hear that. They rejected his presence. They rejected his name. Remember in, in, in the Tower Bible? They said, let us make a name for ourselves. We don't want to be called children of God. So they became the children of men. And so God said, well, if you reject my presence, you reject my name, I'm going to give you one more try. I'm going to send my word. Oh, the Bakishi did him. Goodness gracious. Jeremiah 7, verse 12 to 14. I hope y'all getting something from my message. My spirit shall lead you to this place. Go ahead. But go now to my place, which was in Shiloh, where I set my name at, at the first, and see what I did to it because of the wickedness of my people the Israel. Lord said, I don't care if you Baptist, Methodist. I don't care if you Pentecostals. I don't care if you holiness. Look at the past, what I did to those people that didn't like my, stay in my presence. Didn't want to come to church anymore. And those that did come didn't want to be called by my name. They didn't want to be called Christians or they didn't want to be called Catholics or Baptists. They didn't want to be called. But then you reject my word too. He said, look what I did to them. First Samuel 4, verse 10 to 12. So the Philistines fought and Israel was defeated and every man fled to his tent. There was a very great slaughter, and there fell of Israel 30,000 foot soldiers. Go ahead. Also, the ark of God was captured. So when the ark of God was captured, God is beginning to move in the ark of God. But this is where I have to give you the spiritual revelation of this journey, because this is of the Lord. You know, there's a verse in the book of Judges when Samuel parents came to him, because Sam, uh, Samson, uh, Samson um, parents came to him, and, and he says, I want to marry one of the daughters of the Philistines. And they say, all oh, these beautiful girls in Israel, why you got to go there? And the Bible says, Samson, he insisted. So they went and got the woman that he wanted. And the Bible says, but they didn't know that was of the Lord. See, what the church don't know is that when the glory of God departs, you don't know that's of the Lord. It's already planned. God used the opportunity of your fall 
to send the ark to someone who will appreciate it. So God will use your testimony to get other people saved. You may not make it. Others do. I got people in this church, for instance, in my ministry, that I, that I started off ministering to their brother or their sister or their parents. They're all gone. And someone who was not in my ministry is then here because that one that backslid told me and I got them, I went and shed Christ and got them saved. They're here, but the other one is gone. That's the history of all the ministry. And God will use you in your backslidden state to get the next person that he's going to lead into the land of promise. The person that led me to the Lord the day I got saved was backslidden when he led me. Continue. Also, the ark of God was captured, and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, died. Then a man of Benjamin ran from the battle okay, line. Okay, we don't go. Uh, uh, verse 19 to 22. Now his daughter-in-law, Phineas's wife, was... Okay, we already read all that. I, I'm, I'm skip all that. Okay. So John 2, 19. Let's go to the New Covenant. So, so remember what happened to the, the place in Shiloh. Remember what happened to the temple in the days of, uh, of Rea, I mean, not Rehoboam, Josiah and all of them when the Babylonians, Nebuchadnezzar came down, burned it down. They built a new one. And here come Jesus. Because God is going to use Jesus like the angel. Jesus is being sent by God to lead us to the place. And so he comes to his own and he sees they, they go into church. They're all in religion. So what do you say? John 2, 19. Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple. And in three days, I will raise it up. So he tells them, you got to tear your church down. You, you got to tear your whole way down. So a lot of people, when they listen to me, and those of y'all hear me, and you go to get other people to listen to me, they can't follow the scriptures. See, you hear the scriptures because I, I, I give you the word of God. I don't give you my, 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 my concept of what God said. I, I let Jeremiah tell you. I, I, I let Ezekiel tell you. I let Daniel. I, I let John and, and Matthew and Luke. And I let the gospel tell you. I let the Acts tell you. I let Paul 13 epistles tell you. Or John or, or, or Peter writing or James or Jude or the book of Revelation. They just tell you. They try, and then they try to tell you what the scriptures mean. I don't tell you what it mean. I let you... Follow me as I read them, and you read along. So what did he say? He said, tear that church down. See? <laughs> I don't have to tell you what that means. It don't mean anything other than what it says. You need to tear down that church. And he says, in three days, I build up another one. What was he talking about? Verse 21. But he was speaking of the temple of his body. He was talking, and so he says, and so I had you read in Peter way, that stone, that temple that they rejected had become the chief cornerstone. But we also as living stones or temples are being built up into a spiritual house. Matthew 26, 61. And said, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. And the high priest arose and said to him, do you answer nothing? So, so when people hear me, and those of you who listen to me on the internet, you're going to tell somebody, another pastor, to come and listen to me, and he's going to think I'm trying to destroy his church. <laughs> you see, the high priest says, what do you mean? Ted, because he had a job, so the pastor thinks I'm going to put him out of work. <laughs> so if they listen to my message, they say, I can't give that message. If I give that message to my people, they're going to reject me. No, 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 no. Because when he led captivity captive, he gave gifts to men. He gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors, and some to be teachers. Why? The next verse said, for the maturing of the saints, to take them out of religion, that they may grow up. Understanding the word of God, understanding the call on their life. Now, if you're not doing that, then I understand why you will be afraid of people listening to a teaching that's more mature than the one that you can give. 
Forgive your Baptist teaching. Ain't nothing wrong with your teaching. Saved and washed in the blood. Uh, uh, as the writer of Hebrews said, leaving the elementary teachings of Christ. Faith to God. Repentance. Baptisms. Judgments. Resurrections. Then he says in the next verse, let us go on to maturity, perfection. Then he said, this we will do if God permits. He says in the chapter previous to that, you, you are just babes. You ought to be teachers by now. And so I go to Romans. I'm sorry. I want to go to Matthew 27, verse 40. And saying, you who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. So he's up on the cross. You know what they said to him on the cross? Where's your temple? He said, I got to go get the other stones. <laughs> See, there's people who died by faith. He's getting ready to go to those that are captive. Those that are prisoners by death in hell. He's going to preach to the spirits that were disobedient in the days of the flood while the ark was being prepared that was saved by water, whereas only eight souls were saved by water. He's going to save a multitude of people from the days before the flood. He's going to preach to those in Sodom and Gomorrah because he told the people, he told the Beth Sadai and Chorazin and all of those places, he says, look at here, if the works that was done in you was done in Sodom and Gomorrah, they were repentant. And because they didn't have an opportunity, I got to go and preach to the people that was killed in Sodom and Gomorrah, the five towns. And guess what? He said some of them would repent. And so he's going to set the prisoners free. He's going to loose the captives. He's going to go up on high, and he's going to take them to a city above while they're waiting for us. Jerusalem above is the mother of all. Up there, you see multitudes of angels. You see the spirits of just men made perfect. You see the, the, the registry of the church of the firstborn. You see God the Father. You see Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant that speak better things than Abel. You see, you don't know the story. First Corinthians three, verse 16. I'm on page three. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? And so he sends two people that take us to the place. Mm -hmm. In the Old Testament, he sends the angel of his presence and the angel of his name. It was those two working as a team that would lead them to the place where the temple would be built. In the new covenant, he sends his word and he sends the Holy Ghost. It is, that's why Jesus says, it's expedient you for you that I go away and I leave. So they were in the presence of the Lord. <laughs> See, the Lord was, his name would be Emmanuel. God was present among us. Mm -hmm. But now I will go to get the one that you cannot see. He called Holy Ghost. Now y'all not hear me. And he says, when he come, he will lead you and he will guide you to the place. Mm -hmm. And so know you not that you're the temple of God and the spirit of God dwelleth in you. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? So what do he say in 2 Corinthians to the Corinthians about them being a temple? Chapter 6 verse 16, 2 Corinthians. Remember, he's telling the Corinthians who they are. You're not only a living stone, Peter says. That stone is your temple. That stone is your temple. Go ahead. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. So God sends his presence through his word, Jesus. He sends his name through the Holy Ghost. That's why we get baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. It is those first two, the Son with his name and the Holy Ghost in his name that brings us to the Father. So he said, I'm going where the Father is so I can prepare a place that you can come so that you will have the name of the Father, 
the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Ghost. So, continue. Ephesians 2, 21 and 22. So, that these stones that are temples by themselves are being put together that it may grow up into a spiritual place where God wants to come and tabernacle. So all of us stones, which is by ourselves a temple by ourselves, where we worship in the spirit and we worship God, the word, and God, the Holy Ghost, inside ourselves. Go ahead. So as many of us have been baptized into water, we baptize into Christ. As many as are baptized by the spirit, we are baptized into the Holy Ghost. So we are both in Christ and in the Holy Ghost. Those two sanctuaries that make up the temple of God, we can get through them. Oh, I am the way, that's the outer court. I am the truth, that's the holy place. And I am the life, that's the most holy place. We get to live in the word, the Holy Ghost, and then in the Father. That God may be all in all. Ephesians 2, 21 and 22. In whom the whole building, being fitted together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. So we are being fit together to grow into a holy temple in the Lord, in the Holy Ghost, that they can present us to the Father. So in Genesis, the Father said, it is finished. Then in the gospel, on the Calvary, Jesus says it is finished. Then Paul said in Thessalonians, that the Holy Ghost one day will say, it is finished. And then we will be raptured and caught up that God may be all in all. That we will have the last part of the Trinity. We will have the Father to go along with the Holy Ghost and go along with his word. Man. Go ahead. In whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. So we are being built up as a dwelling place of God that we can go to the place that Jesus has gone to prepare for. So, so that that temple will be constructed. Go ahead. That's the end of the chapter. Okay, that's in <laughs> Hebrews 3 verse 6. A Christ as a son over his own house. Back up a little bit so you can see that Moses built the tabernacle. Verse 3, for this one has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who built the house has more honor than the house. For every house is built by someone. So every denomination has a chief over it. Every denomination has a father over that house. And his doctrine become the doctrine for the Baptist, the Methodist, whether it be Luther or uh, it be someone else that, 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 you know, someone starts an organization to become a denomination. Go ahead. But he who built all things is God. So God is over all of the different religions. God is over all of the houses of religion. He's over all of them. Whether you like what I'm saying or that, God is over all the houses of faith. Go ahead. And Moses indeed was faithful in all his house as a so servant. So it's one of the houses that are in the heavenly places. Moses' religion that with the tabernacle and those that had that faith, he was faithful. Go ahead over that, that denomination. Go ahead. For a testimony of those things which would be spoken afterward. But his was a testimony to tell you that someone else was going to come and build another faith. Go ahead. But Christ as a son over his own house. So then Christ has come over as, as a son over his own house. So he's building his own house. So he says, unless a corner we fall in the ground and dies about it alone. But if it falls in the ground, it's going to build more people. So he went in the grave so that he could come up and spring up. And here we come. It's that resurrection that gives us the power of our faith to be a member. Because that stone had to be rejected. Oh, y'all not hearing me. And that stone, because it's a foundation stone, had to go into the ground. So they had to kill him so he could go into the ground and lay the foundation. A sure foundation. Oh, y'all now hear me. Continue. Whose house we are. So if, who house we are. If. If we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm to the end. And so we have to hold on to this confidence all the way to the end. Ezekiel 36, 27. So this is what God promised he would do to the people that he brought to the promised land. But not the land of promise. <laughs> so he brought them to the promised land and then promised them something of a land that was above them. Mm -hmm. So it says in Hebrews that Abraham looked for a, a city 
which has foundations who build it and maker it was God. He looked for a country not down here, it says in Hebrews 11. And so he became a pilgrim and stranger as he went around the, the, the promised land. <laughs> so he went around the promised land waiting for the land of promise. <laughs> you can read that, but you're not going to see it until somebody like me come and open up the eyes of your understanding. Continue. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you will keep my judgments and do them. And so God said, the day is coming. I'm going to put my spirit in you. I'm going to put my word in you. And it's going to lead you to where I'm at. So that's why I'm trying to go. So Paul says, seek the things above. Look in Colossians 3, verses 1 to 3. This is the problem with the church. They don't seek things above. Mm. They, they quote Ephesians where it says all spiritual blessings in the heavenly realm. But it says in the heavenly realm. Mm -hmm. Colossians 3 verses 1 to 3. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is. So you and I must seek the things because he's leading us to the place. He's at that place. So he's saying seek the things from that place. The things above. Why? Where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on and the, the earth. And the church, the Baptists, the Methodists, the Catholics, even the Pentecost and the Holiness, they cannot set their mind on things above. So the Spirit says, He that have an ear, let the Spirit speak to you. I want you to come out of the holy place because you're holy. And I want you to go beyond the veil so you can be most holy. But you have to have an ear to hear. Continue. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. So my life is hid in Christ. So I'm in two places at one time. At the rapture, I will be consummated with my other half. I will be fused together with myself. So I'm right now with Christ talking to him while I'm talking to you. Don't take my word for it. Keep on reading. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him so in glory. So when Christ appear, you're already in him. So in Thessalonians, when people quote the verses for the rapture, the Bible says Christ is bringing us with him. <laughs> See, I'm already with him. Then it says the dead shall rise, and we which are alive shall, so both the dead and the living are with him. But then the dead and the living rise. Why? There's a half of them that are dead in Christ that hasn't risen. And you read that. Now, I don't have to tell you what it means. All you got to do to go with Thessalonians and read what it says. See, we just read in Colossians, your life is hid in Christ in God. That when he appear, you should appear because you're already in him. Know you not that as many of us that have been baptized have been baptized into Christ. So when I got baptized, I went above. But I couldn't get up there until the baptism of the Holy Ghost resurrected me. So Romans 6, it says, if, you, if, if you're baptized in Christ, then, and then you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, then you are also in two places at one time. So he wrote to the Ephesians, it says, God has blessed you with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly realm, in Christ Jesus. John 14, verse 17. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. So the Spirit of truth will dwell in you and be in with you. Romans 8, verse 11. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells I'll in say, you. So if the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, if you have the baptism, if he dwells in you, what? He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. And verse 13 to 15, why is he dwelling in us? Remember what in the Old Testament he says? I want to take you from religion to a place. That's the, you stay in the churches all around you. You got to live somewhere down here. He said, but you know what? You should be worshiping God in the spirit, even when you go to your temple. 
because God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. My spirit shall lead you to the place. Keep reading. Watch this, y'all. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Go ahead. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. We can call him Father. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, that thy will be done on earth as we will be doing it when we get to heaven. See, what a beautiful revelation. And I think I'm going to stop here. How much time? Just five minutes over. I'm five minutes over. Okay. <laughs> then to him that is able to keep you from falling, the one that can present you faultless before the throne of grace, to the only wise God, our Savior, be majesty, dominion, power, both now and forever. Amen. And amen. God bless you. Amen.